Welcome to the Portfolio Project by Raymond Johnson, myself, for Project Management 500 for Colorado State University Global Campus, and also the professor is Dr. Mirhadi. What we will cover in this particular presentation is how to implement project management best practices. Now, first we'll start with project selection. How does an organization select their project? Projects should be directly linked to an organization's strategy. Their business strategies should rank their projects in an effort to cause the mission and the strategy of the organization to come to the fore. So in other words, when uh, an organization is selecting a project, they should let these first two things guide their selection process. That is number one, they need to actually fit into the organization's strategy. And number two, uh, their business strategies should help rank which programs uh, are taken on, first, second, or third. Also, daily operations are critical to keep in mind. Uh, why? Because as there are different projects that are going on from day to day, uh, those activities uh, that are taking place or are functioning throughout the day need to take into consideration that people, equipment, capital are being utilized and an organization doesn't want to over uh, stretch themselves in any particular direction so that they're not able to uh, be able to accomplish their everyday activities. And then fourth, projects should also be selected based on their strategic value. Um, are they in harmony? Are those projects in harmony with uh, existing portfolio projects that uh, the company is engaged in? Now, secondly, prioritizing them. Once you've selected them, you've got to prioritize which ones are first, second, and third. This can only be done by first allocating the resources that an organization has. Oftentimes, this step will guide the placement of a project because of the availability or the lack of availability of certain resources. There are some things to consider when you are prioritizing your projects. Uh, you want to consider that there are certain costs. There are other projects that are in the pipeline. There are also other, other projects that are, wor are working, being worked on. There are project strategic alignment. Uh, are those particular projects in alignment with the organization? How, what is the risk? How much is the risk for that particular project? What is the timeline for completing these projects? Um, and then what does upper management say? What is their view on the desirability of certain projects taking place um, successfully or happening or being put on the front burner? Uh, and then there are outside influences also that have to be taken into con to consideration, uh, like the environment. So. Prior to prioritizing projects is not an easy um, process, but it's something that has to be meticulously engaged in. Now, in addition to that, the project needs to be organized. And this project has to be organized in the right way. Before a project is actually begun, uh, there are a few things which function as guidelines and authority for the new project. At the first stage of planning, the project resources, the finances, the stakeholders, the project manager are always dedicated to the success of the project. So when a project is organized, the, the success factors need to be put in place. Now, when a project management plan is uh, being developed, that helps also the project to be organized. And there are a number of moving parts that go into the project management plan. There's the scope management, the requirements for the project, the scope needs to be defined, uh, there needs to be uh, a work breakdown structure that is created, a plan schedule management needs to take place, among many other different elements uh, which the Project Management Institute actually outlines. Now there are four main stages of a project which include the initiating stage, planning stage, executing stage, and the closing stage. Now, each one of these stages can be expanded into more details as necessary, but it also depends greatly upon the complexity of the actual project. Now, let me give you an illustration of how this actually looks. There's the initiating stage, which is right in the middle of your screen, uh, the, the second arrow from the left, and then there's the planning process that takes place and this is where monitoring and controlling begins and then there's the executing at the bottom of the circle uh, there in the middle of the screen and as that process continues to go over and over and over planning and replanning and executing and uh, uh, addressing different issues that come up you're monitoring and you're controlling all of those elements until you finally end 
uh, at the closing process of the project. That you know that you actually have closed the project when certain deliverables are deliverables are met. Um, also, you need to make sure that at the close of the project, you uh, complete whatever project uh, documents that are needed. For example, a lessons learned, and then you give the project or you hand it off to the end users. Now, sometimes the project has to be monitored afterwards, um, but in most cases, uh, there's an end of the project and then a second project is actually monitoring that project over the years. Uh, and so this is just an illustration of project or organization. Now let's look at pro program management. Program management is a very interesting concept because what it does is it allows the program manager to make sure that the projects and the programs that are going on um, at the same time that those particular elements that go into those different projects don't contradict with one another. For example, uh, program management resolves any limitations or problems that could affect different programs. Um, it also guarantees that an organization's strategic activities are still in line with the project and the program goals and objectives. And it also, pro program management, solves problems through change management within the program. Now here's a suggested plan for program management. It allows, um, uh, it allows to you to identify the projects and their needs. It allows uh, program, the program manager to evaluate the feasibility or the cost benefit and evaluation criteria. And it also selects projects judiciously. Program management doesn't just haphazardly select a project. And then lastly, number four, there's a time that all projects have to be um, put on. In other words, a time, you need to time them, first, second, third, when can it begin, when does it need to wait, uh, because of certain situations do we need to reevaluate when we're going to begin this particular project. But um, a program management uh, process needs to review all the entities like the market analysis, the competitiveness, the resource availability, in order to actually um, initiate a program, a, a program management. Now there's planning and scheduling. Let's look at planning and scheduling. There are different steps involved when planning a project. First step is to deal with defining what that project is through its scope. Uh, next, it needs to deal with uh, writing out the project plan along with its objectives. And then uh, a work breakdown structure needs to be developed. And this is crucial because it shows exactly what the project uh, is going to take in order to be successful. It'll demonstrate which processes are necessary. Uh, it'll also document all the schedule, the resource requirements, and the costs as well for the, pro for the um, project. Now, when you're planning and scheduling, uh, you've got to also determine the structure of the project and scheduling the project will help to clarify the things that need to be uh, in order in order to complete the project successfully. One of the ways of doing this is through a Gantt chart and it's strange enough but a Gantt chart is uh, one of my favorite tools because it actually lets you see everything that's there and all the gaps, et cetera. In fact, here's an example of a Gantt chart. Um, this particular Gantt chart gives you all of the different things that have to go into the, the program on the left side. And uh, then you have different uh, teams that are assigned to different areas of the project. And there are milestones that are planned and strategically placed uh, throughout the project in order to help the project progress. So this Gantt chart lets you know exactly what is to be expected at any time. Uh, when I worked on my terminal research for urban and regional planning, we followed a Gantt chart uh, for uh, writing uh, our terminal research. So Gantt charts are very, very, very helpful. Now there are methods, <coughs> excuse me, for estimating costs. There are three different that I like to talk about. There's the bottom-up method, there's the expert judgment method, and the work breakdown structure. Let's take a look at the bottom-up method for estimating costs. Uh, this should only be used when stakeholders are more interested in the cost of a project instead of the timeline that's needed to complete the project. The reason why is because the bottom-up method is a method that takes time because all subcontractors have to go into 
uh, uh, giving their input of what it would take to complete the project and what it would cost as well. It is a very accurate method, but it's for small to medium-sized projects. Now, subcontractors who do the work, as we mentioned, at different points have to give their estimates for the work they'll be doing, but this can be extremely costly, um, and it may not necessarily be 100% accurate because work um, flows, not workflows change, but costs change depending on where a subcontractor is. If a subcontractor is at the end of a project and the project may take one or two years, um, then the cost that that project that subcontractor gives are susceptible to market rates changing. Now, one good thing about the bottom-up method is that the project manager will gain an understanding of what all the individual work packages to the um, project will be. And so this is a good way to use a method for estimating costs, even if a project manager is not sure or an organization is not sure of exactly what uh, the project entails. Secondly, let's look at expert judgment for estimating costs. It's based on criteria and experts' opinion. Many, many different experts give uh, their estimate of what the costs for the project would be. And the experts can be from within the organization, but usually they're from the outside. Now, after all of the estimate estimated costs are given, a sample is selected for the final cost. Third method for estimating costs is a work breakdown structure. And according to the Project Management Institute, this WBS breaks down the scope of the work to be done by the project team so that they can uh, accomplish the objectives and create the required deliverables. Now, the reason why this is helpful because the work breakdown structure works down, breaks down the work into work packages. Those work packages also have costs that are associated with them. And so when the work packages are summarized, you have uh, a cost for the program. Now let's, let's switch just a little bit from cost to monitoring control and control. Monitoring and control is a way to determine whether or not a project is actually on task. Uh, one such method for doing this is by using the milestone analysis, and we talked about that in our Gantt chart. Um, but different milestones are developed and they're strategically placed uh, during the composition of the work breakdown structure, and they're put there uh, in order to help the team. Uh, these isolated milestones show that certain progress has been made. They also show that certain resources have to be uh, allocated at a certain time or reallocated at a certain time. And um, they're also a way to pull the team together. It helps to unify them and keep the morale hall high. I find this particular uh, element to be very important uh, for the team's morale when there's a long project where people are looking for uh, the end result to finally get there. And so these these milestones allow you to celebrate along the way and have these miniature wins so that when you get to the end of the project, it helps time to actually pass. But it's a good way to monitor and control because it lets you know whether or not you're on task. When a project is monitored, it's oftentimes compared to the budget, the work breakdown st structure, or the project plan. Uh, and an easy way to do this is to use software that's dedicated to project management. And project, uh, when software is used, team members are able to gauge their progress against that of other team members. And they're also able to get a sense of the overall pro uh, pro progress of the project. Now, project controlling is different in that it actually governs what's going on with the project. So you've got monitoring and controlling, but controlling the project is something that's a little bit different. Now let's look at communication metrics and project updates. Communication and project management is very important to a project success. It needs to happen vertically and horizontally. Uh, horizontally meaning it needs to happen between team members. And it also needs to make sure that it happens vertically between the program manager and the um, executive leadership. Uh, this is important to make sure that the, uh, there's buy-in from the executive leadership. And it also needs to be important so that the elected executive leadership knows what's happening so that in, in, as close to real time as possible because when changes are made, they need to not be surprised. They need to understand what's going on. And uh, if, if at all a project should go over budget or 
time or anything like that. They would need to know um, what was happening in the meantime. Measuring the progress of a project and comparing it to the planned performance is usually done through a gap analysis. And so this is one tool of communicating. It's a metric that can be used and a gap analysis determines uh, what needs to be done. It, it tells also what is the probable cause of a particular problem. Let's look at risk management. Now, the more risk management practices are used or implemented or reviewed, the less there is of a project being uncertain. And this is very crucial because if uh, risk management is engaged upon and paid close attention to, uh, then the project manager or the program manager can make the necessary changes quickly to get the project on task or to keep the project on task. Having a risk management plan helps the program manager to do this. It allows them uh, to address potential problems. And if there isn't a risk management plan, then the uncertainty of a project is overwhelming and certain to fail. Now, technology is important. Uh, information technology helps companies to make technology that helps project managers to improve performance. For example, the dashboard is a commonly used method for communicating how well the project is going. Uh, in fact, some software calculates the planned and actual cost of the project, uh, the schedule variances, and the resources. Now, here are the benefits of everything that we're talking about. Project management is, is very, very, very intricate. In fact, its main goal is to successfully complete a project that aligns with an organization's goals and objectives. It needs to match up with the portfolio uh, of projects that a company has taken on and that they plan to take on in the future. The elements that have been discussed so far are key elements in the success of any project management endeavor. These particular elements will help the global infrastructure group use project management principles effectively. Uh, and that was in the case study reading for this project. Some of the other benefits are that when it's utilized, uh, the global infrastructure group will see that their project management offices will be well equipped with the right tools to not only lead their team to be uh, to successful completion of the project, but also they'll be able to help their members who don't have project management background um, to uh, add to the project management environment of the organization. Now, the Global Infra Infrastructure Group can share best practices across their international organization through their program called the Link for Synchronization. This program will allow training, continuing education, mentoring, um, and they're great places uh, to permeate best practices content. content. And these are, are my references. As you can see, we've got quite a few. I hope that this has been a helpful and informative presentation.